Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with some more World of Tanks today, taking a look at a few more replays. We're going to start things out with the Yog Panzer IV, which by most is considered to be one of the worst tank destroyers in the game, mostly because of its gun selection. In this replay, I'm using the Stugs 75mm cannon, and in this game, it's not so bad because everybody here is a tier 6. KV-1S spotted for the 140, but we see him looking at us with that large cannon. I think I'm going to back up a little bit. So, yeah, the gun selection, not great. You've got the Stugs 75mm, and then you can choose to use an 88, which is going to give you more damage, but you're going to have a longer reload time, less accuracy, and less penetration. So it's not always ideal, but sometimes, if you can aim at weak spots, it'll get the job done. So, anyways... Looking at the game at hand, we're just trying to keep that corner pinned. T1 Heavy there, lovely target to fire at because he's the size of a barn. But we're going to switch to the VK. He's showing his side. He's wanting to back up there, but boom, right into the track. And I'm thinking, you know what, maybe we can pull a track damage routine on him. All right, so there's another one. Everybody else is letting him have it as well. There's another into the track, also causing damage. Great when you can do that because you're keeping him held down, immobile, while damaging him. And it's one of my favorite things to do in this game. So there's that T1 again. We know that that side armor is just super soft. Trying to get a shot in there. Maybe going for some tracks as well to keep him out. Uh, looking at maybe just damaging his other track as well. Uh, because I know from that front part there where he's got it angled, that's, that's a tough pen. I am missing a couple shots as well. He's going to back off. We managed to track him again. But I'm looking at that VK. I'm thinking about maybe doing the same thing I did to the last one with track and damage. So while the shots go out there, I think some of my allies out here are having some trouble. You can see we lost the KV-1 and the Wolverine. Another shot's about to go out. Uh, looks like the TOG-2 actually finishes him off. So here's our TOG. He's already been halved. There's a KV-1S throwing another shot into him. The only thing really keeping that thing alive is the hit point count. So the TOG-2 is immobile, but the KV-1S has a super long reload time. I'm just holding this position, just in case something else wants to pop around that corner. Uh, still dealing with the T1 Heavy as a threat. TOG retreating. Artillery fire inbound. Shot out at the KV-1S via the TOG. Uh, he's definitely a one-shot to most vehicles here now. T1 pops out. I tried to take a quick shot there, not really taking the time to aim, missing it, really regretting that because now he's backed off. That would have been an easy kill right there. I'm kind of hoping he <laughs> shows his face again. There you can see some artillery downrange. Taking a look at the mini-map, we don't seem to have a really good spread, so my confidence in this battle is low. I'm waiting to see who's going to make the move. Will the T1 Heavy pop back out again? Or is that KV-1S going to make an approach? Artillery still trying to grab the T1. There's the T1. Done. Finishing him off as he pops out. Almost forgetting that I was up here. But still at 600 health. There's the KV-1S. Looking at the TOG. Easy kill because of the TOG silhouette. I go to rush in on the KV-1S. Reaction shot. Manages to track him. Flips him around. But I know he's got a long reload time. Shot out into the side. Finishing him off, and that's the advantage to playing some of the other tanks. You know what they have equipped. I know all about that gun. I know that, that within that reload time that I could get two shots off at least. And, whoo, that was definitely intense for me. I knew I had to charge him. And I'm being asked in the chat here if I was actually going to upload this video. At the time, I, I think I say I doubt it. I wasn't really too sure about it. Uh, but obviously, here we are. So, there's that. I'm still looking at this corner thinking, well, is anybody else going to pop out there? I, I, thinking no. I haven't seen anybody else in a while since we killed the T1 Heavy, so I think we're clear here. But if you see, we've only got a Hellcat, myself, an AT2, and a piece of artillery. The AT2 is quite a ways out. Let's take a look at this map here. Uh, he's going to be surrounded, and he's finished there. Wasn't in a good position, and as we know, that thing is... Slow as molasses. Not really going to go that far. Uh, the Hellcat is a good contender, mostly because of his gun. But in regards to armor, we're not fantastic. And we're fighting against 
mostly heavy. Yep, all heavies and one piece of artillery. I know that I can still pen all of them, though. I don't have any premium ammo, but I'm still confident about being able to pen them. Although, I do have a lot of HE, maybe a little too much in this game. Still maintaining this position, keeping an eye on the minimap. KV-1 goes down to the Hellcat. Now we've got the BDR, T-14, and KV-1. Last known locations. Hellcat manages to spot the KV-1, I believe it is, if not the BDR. It's hard to tell which one's lit via the minimap. There's the T-14 making an approach on the base. There's the KV-1 on the hillside. Hellcat possibly in danger. I'm trying to get my shot up here. I managed to twitch a little bit and lose my aim. I'm not sure why I didn't take a blind shot on this one. I'm thinking maybe he didn't see me and I can still maintain camouflage. Uh, I wasn't sure what to do at that point. In hindsight, I'm thinking eh, I could have taken at least two or three blind shots. But I didn't really want to waste too much of my ammo as well just because it was uh, the Hellcat and I left. So artillery is down. They still have theirs. And we're facing three heavies. I don't know who this guy is. He's a stranger to me. But I'm thinking, well, let me just shadow him. Let's, let's go back up the ice road and hold the base. You can see I even type it into the chat there. T-14 is the closest to trying to cap. If the other team is smart, what they'll do is roll together. And focus fire us down because our armor isn't fantastic. At this tier, my armor's not bad because if you can see, I've got some really nice slopes there. Uh, so I do have some confidence mostly because I've got my all my hit points intact. Uh, the Hellcat rolling forward, not really wanting to take the time to move, move as a team, but you know, whatever. It seems like he knows what he's doing. One-shotting the T-14, obviously not having uh, a full complement of health. So I'm just going to continue getting up to the battle a little late. Obviously, it's hard to keep up with a Hellcat. Extremely fast tank destroyer. One of the fastest vehicles in the game. Uh, Hellcat turns around. I look back at him saying, okay, well, he's going down the ice road again. Maybe he's just going to check that flank and hold that position. You still got a BDR and a KV-1 and their artillery for support. I'm guessing, okay, well, these guys got to be smart they're gonna roll together right hopefully if you know for their team not hopefully for mine but uh, you know just gauging human intelligence here once again BDR uh, says the BDR crashed as he was spotted by the Hellcat but then we see the KV-1 I managed to get a shot out on the track there nothing there's one on the track actually immobilizing him Bouncing off of my armor, I get back into a hold down position. You can see where that's bouncing off of there on the, I want to say the mid plate, since there's no turret on this vehicle. I'm just holding this position. I'm thinking, okay, well, I know I can pen him. I don't know what gun he has. There he is again. I'm going to I'm gonna test him out because I've got a high rate of fire. I can test his armor. One in the turret, another one into the turret. Let's do another because we've got that rate of fire. Boom, another one in the turret. He's trying to get behind cover, probably trying to use the wreck. But you know what I'm saying? You're too close to me, buddy. And I've got some German accuracy. Done. Hellcat, of course, finishes off the artillery. And we managed to save the game. So <laughs> with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the battle results. So as you can see, actually getting a mastery badge in this thing, uh, not really my favorite tank destroyer. I definitely can't say that I would keep it. I feel that it's not as horrible as most people make it out to be, but I think that it's kind of bad luck. For some reason, I just get put into some really awkward or bad games. And at lower tiers, when you're the low man on the totem pole, just forget it. Hide in a bush. Try to aim at weak spots. Use your camo net and binoculars to just hit long-range targets and support the rest of the team. Because in that game, sure, you know, it was a decent game. I was a higher tier vehicle. I had a chance. But in some of the others, uh, yeah, it's definitely not something that I want to keep. Looking forward to the Yog Panther, though. So there's that one. You can see we did quite a bit there uh, to support the rest of the team. 
2,144 damage on that. Uh, great rate of fire with that set, that long 75 millimeter. Fantastic gun uh, on the Stug, and does okay when you're lucky enough to get in this type of a match. And there's a look at some of the other stats as well. So let's take a look at the next game. And here we are taking a look at the Leopard Prototype A, starting at the top of the hill on Himmelsdorf, thinking, well, since we're here, might as well roll up and maybe get a quick shot off on the enemy as they roll around the corner. ELC AMX making his movement. Not sure that that's necessarily a great idea because there's the Tiger II. And uh, I'm thinking, well, there's, there's a T-54E1 and that ELC just instantly destroyed by the 54 as the rest of my team decides to roll in uphill. I'm seeing if maybe I can at least get something out of this because we know that we can't trade too much fire in the Leopard prototype. Boom, there's a nice, well-aimed shot on that T-54E1. I'm backing off to reload. Just a typical tactic, but I'm thinking about looking at the minimap and uh, turning around. You can see these guys, are everybody's trying to push the T-95 up the hill. I'm going back. I'm going to use this thing's amazing speed to get downhill and relocate. Because that's what this thing is all about. Relocating and helping the team where it may need it most. And I can see that we've got a Tiger II and an AMX 1390. Not necessarily paying attention to each other. Uh, you can see that there's an IS-3 also moving in. Possibly a T-44. Uh, the 1390 is down. All that's left is the Tiger II. I'm hoping that he's competent and able to support me. I'm here to just try to keep the flag alive. It's not really a fun job, but somebody's got to do it. Tiger II rolling in. I get a shot out and manage to back up for the reload. There's another shot out, I believe, from the Tiger II. Base capture underway. Tiger II continuing to roll forward. There's an IS-3. Uh, as we catch his silhouette, we can see that he's actually not looking at us. Guns up, trying to get a shot in between his turret, maybe hit that ring. Jam him up a bit. He's backing off, though. He doesn't want to deal. He's still not looking at me, though. So I use that opportunity to roll forward. The rest of the team is still trying to push that hill. I'm looking at what we've got here. So Tiger 2, trying to get a shot on that lower plate. Right through. Hoping to set him on fire. Not happening just yet. But we are able to help reset the capture. Now we can also see that there's a T-69 in the background. All we have is this Tiger II. Shot out. Hits the seam of his armor there. T-44 on my flank. I notice it on the minimap. So I turn around to engage. His shot out misses. I zoom in a little bit here. Shot right into his flank. And I see that he's going towards the Tiger II. I'm gambling here and hoping that the Tiger II is competent and able to deal with the T-44 on his own because I'm worried about the flag. I know that if I spend too much time on that 44, it might just be enough to get these guys up on the cap. There's a 34 in the distance. I really couldn't tell if he was in the cap circle or not, how far out he was, but I go ahead and take that shot. You see that tracer just fly by. I'm not sure if somebody had an angle on my track or not. 34 in the distance. I'm looking at the tiger as well. I'm focusing on resetting the cap. I know I could have tried to hit the 34 again, but I wanted to reset as we're nearing uh, a high percentage here. 68, 70 percent. Oh man, I'm switching to heat ammunition. Just trying to shoot at something there. There's a reset on that cap. Taking some damage. I had to use my kit on the ammo rack. Nightmare time, ladies and gentlemen. T-69 rolling forward. Killing my driver. This is the worst thing that you can see. An auto-loading tank in a vehicle that has barely any armor. I throw another shot out just to perhaps keep him at bay. It looks like he's needing to reload now. But I'm like, all right. Uh, I don't know what to do. Do I focus on you? Do I, do I worry about the cap? Let's get a shot out. Thankfully, I had some assistance there, it seems, from the Fosh. And I'm back on looking at the cap. My driver is down. Not really worrying about that right now. Reloading my next piece of heat ammunition. 
So we've managed to reset the cap quite a bit here. Uh, the Tiger II, I'm guessing, and the Fosh laying down some fire. I believe here I'm about to repair my driver. There's the IS-3. Boom, drive-by shooting on him right into the lower plate, it looked like. As we try to come around here for a flanking maneuver, as I'm sure they're aware of my previous location. I want to change things up a bit. There's that T-34, quickly dispatched. There's an SU in the distance. I'm thinking about this uh, 122-44 right into the back plate. Extremely weak as the rest of the team rolls in. T-44 out in the distance. And we're finishing off the SU. The T-44 still alive. I'm not sure if he was able to kill the Tiger too. He was the one that I did not chase down. Uh, I gave up on that mostly because I felt like, hey, you know, the flag is more important. But I do remember that this was a game that I had live streamed. I remember being uh, fairly proud of myself because I was able to reset uh, the capture and perhaps save the game. Uh, I think you have to sacrifice your fun sometimes for the, for the overall victory or the betterment of the team. And that was a case where I said, look, the Leopard is fast. It's fracking fast. It can relocate. I'm going to be going downhill so I can go even faster than my, my top speed. So I went for it. We relocated, lickety split, got in there, threw down some shots, and maintained the area with only the backup of a Tiger II. And uh, and then the Fosh later joined us because the 1390 had bought it. But you know, even that 1390, he did buy some time, and that's you know that's getting something done there at least. So as we can see here, not a bad game, uh, second class badge, uh, quite a <laughs> quite a few credits there. Uh, that was, I believe, a daily double for 3,000 flat XP. You can see all the targets that we managed to tag. Not bad at all. 4,046 damage on that one with the Leopard prototype. Fantastic vehicle. Uh, I think even though I'm looking forward to the Leopard 1, uh, I, I still enjoy the prototype enough to want to keep it. Kind of like how I've kept all of the Centurions. But, you know, I think that was, was a great example of how to use this tank. I think that's what it's built for, in all honesty. I think that it is just great for relocating. I think that it just has that very accurate gun with enough firepower to simply lay down the law. And, and that, for me, was some pretty aggressive play. A lot of you guys like to say that I'm not aggressive enough. Well, that was... That was a good example of, you know, some of the moments where I feel that aggression is absolutely necessary uh, because we did have to hold that capture point. But uh, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this look at uh, World of Tanks. Had some fun uh, covering these replays, and I will continue to do so. So with that said, I'll definitely see you on the next one.